Hi, I'm Ghosty, and this is TLDR Plays, the series where we review games in 5 minutes or less so that you can decide whether they're right for you. Railroads and Catacombs is a card-building roguelike. I personally think it stands out from a lot of others out there, and the demo has already made it clear that this is a game I'm going to get hooked on. You and your characters are travelling through desolate lands, leaving your train in hopes of gathering resources to upgrade both the train and your crew. The train acts as your headquarters and helps you move to different zones so you can gather the resources you need in hopes of surviving. Each zone has different hazards and objectives that await you. Straight from the get-go, the ambient sounds and the dark 2D art styles does well to set the tone for what lies ahead. I love the dark simplistic direction. Nothing is too cluttered and it all helps tie in the eeriness of the area and helps the more detailed elements of the characters stand out. The movement is refreshing. It's not a side-scroller, and you're not just teleported to each new room by clicking it on a map. You are able to move around with your character using WASD so you can walk around and explore. However, it would be nice if there was a point-and-click to move feature, just so there's more options. Exploring is encouraged. You were given an indication to where the boss is from the start. However, if you want to beat them, you're going to have to upgrade those cards. You can upgrade your cards by winning encounters and exploring the map. These upgrades can include increased damage, ignoring enemy armor, and applying negative effects, giving you the ability to tailor different cards to different tactics, making some of them quite powerful, especially if you stack some well-planned upgrades onto a single card. Now, I said exploring is encouraged, but it does have a downside. There is a sanity mechanic in the game, where the more you explore, the more it drops, and each level it drops comes with different consequences. Sanity will affect things like whether you're first in combat, your stamina, and how much info the map will give you about surrounding unexplored tiles. You can replenish your sanity by resting, however you need to have enough resources to do so, and boy does it get daunting when your sanity has hit hysterical and you're still running around trying to find wood. Combat is plotted on a grid and uses a turn-based system. You select your starting spot, then it's all down to the cards you play. You can use cards to attack, move, and acquire buffs such as strength or armor. Hovering over the enemy will show you their stats, including possible attacks, and squares on the board will turn red to tell you where their attacks are going to land. You can then use this to your advantage, to move out the way, or even put the enemy in the line of fire instead. After defeating the boss, you unlock the ability to fight them again at a higher difficulty, and make your way back to the train. Once back on the train, you can use the resources you've gathered to upgrade the crew size, equipment, and unlock new cars on the train, such as the weapon workshop and the merchant cabin. There's actually quite a few things to do back on the train once you've got the required resources, and there are different types of crew members to hire who will be more suited to performing certain tasks. It's a nice way to spend downtime between runs. Overall, I really enjoyed the demo. It is repetitive gameplay, but it's also a roguelike, which I feel goes hand in hand at times. But I feel it brings enough to the table with all the other elements for it to keep you hooked. Railroads and Catacombs is set to release on the 14th of September 2023, but the demo is out now. I'll definitely be adding this to my wishlist and can't wait for it to be released. And don't forget, wishlisting on Steam really helps out devs. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all those indie games out there. Bye!